Hope Channel, Changing Lives. Episode of the consulting room coming off live from the studios of Hope Channel Ghana. We are glad you can join us. The consulting room comes up every Monday from 8 to 9 p.m. I'm Dr. Na Ekampo Inen. A few weeks ago, we had a very interesting conversation about anthrax. And if you missed that episode, you can go to our Facebook and YouTube channels and you can catch that episode. We had with us Dr. Kwapnana Ahia, who is a veterinary doctor, and he gave us a lot of insights on that discussion. And tonight we have him here again joining us for another important discussion. We are advocating for plant-based diet, but whilst we are doing that, and some are striving to get there, how do we make sure that the meat we are eating is safe, healthy, and it's not killing us? Tonight we are discussing meat hygiene, in Ghana, a public health concern. Dr. Anya is going to tell us all about that. Doc, thank you for joining us again. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. So please do send in your questions as we have this conversation. We would love to hear from you. And please do stay tuned. We'll be right back. Star Welcome back to the consulting room. Today's topic is meat hygiene in Ghana, a public health concern. Why is it so important that the meat to eat has to be healthy? Dr. Anya, good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Again. Thank you. Okay. So this seems like a very basic question. But yeah. What is meat? All right. So um, we will define meat as the flesh of an animal okay. that is used as food. Okay. Right. Okay. So basically, um, the animal's flesh and flesh will contain a whole lot of organs. It may not be just the muscles. Okay. Maybe the liver, the kidney, the intestines. A lot of people go all the way to try to eat everything mm -hmm. in the animal. <laughs> so we would say meat is that. Uh, but in ancient English, we would say that uh, meat is food. Okay. So in ancient times, they will mention meat, and they are not necessarily referring to um, you know, flesh of an animal, but they are saying food. Okay, yeah. okay, but okay. now meat is just the flesh of an animal okay, okay. that can be used as food. As food. Okay, yeah. okay. But has it always been the case that meat is used as a source of food? Of food. Yeah. Okay, so if we want to date it back to history, then we would are actually dating it back to human existence mm. because uh, food is a basic part of uh, our lives. 
So the very day we were created, we were given food. So I would say that the first food given um, wasn't meat, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was plants, mm -hmm. uh, fruits, vegetables, plants and all that. Mm -hmm. So if we are looking into uh, Bible history, then it will be from after the flood, in, uh, I think Genesis chapter 9, verse 3 down, where now after the flood, God gave the permission to man to eat meat or animals. So it became part of the diet of, of man. Uh, yeah. So that's what I'll say about the history. It okay. dates way back yeah. to the time of Noah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So as Christians the Bible is our handbook, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it tells us the clean and unclean animals, what's good to eat and what's not good to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but with your expertise, how do you tell which of these animals are okay to eat. Okay, so, so that would take us into um, determining which animals are food animals mm -hmm. and yeah. which ones are not uh, food animals. I will take it into um, the culture of people. Mm. If I want to make an example right now, if there's a chop bar operator who is uh, using vulture mm -hmm. for, for, for food for people, if the people find out, it, it will be a <laughs> chaos situation, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because in the culture of, of Ghana, uh, we, we don't eat that, mm -hmm. right? So to determine which animal is good for food, I would say it falls within the culture of a people. Mm. Now, let me say as Christians, we have a culture too. Well, or as Seven Day Adventists, we have a culture. Yeah. So we have which animals are for food and which ones are not, mm -hmm. right? Which ones we use as food and which ones we don't use as food. When it comes to um, science or uh, in Ghana, veterinary practice and all that, there are animals we call food animals as well. Okay. And they are basically the ruminants, okay. the poultry, and other ones. Then there are also wild animals that are used, those mm -hmm. that are in the wild, right? Mm -hmm. And all that. But in the Jewish culture, there are specific instructions as to which animals should be used for food mm -hmm. and which ones should not be used for yeah. food. And carnivores are no no. Okay. Carnivores are never part of the animals that were supposed to be used for food. Mm, and that's animals feeding on other flesh. On right? other flesh yeah. animals. And, okay. and it appears that in most cultures, uh, carnivores are not used as food as well. Mm. However, some people use them as, as, as food. Um, when we get to the way we slaughter these animals, we will realize that it is much more easier slaughtering even the ones that are used for food mm. than the ones that are not. Okay. I will not want to jump the yeah. gun. Yeah. yeah. So basically, there are food animals and there are animals that are not used for food. If you want to eat everything, you may end up poisoning yourself. Mm. Mm. For instance, we have the puffer fish. Okay. And it's a very poisonous fish. It's in, in the sea. sea. Okay. If you eat it, you will die. Mm. Right? So you can't classify that as food animal. Yeah. So you cannot just wake up one morning and start to eat everything, yeah. right? You should know whether what you are eating uh, is rather is really good for consumption, mm. yeah, mm. or not. Okay, mm. so you've given an example of the puffer fish, but yes, that yes. aside, there are some animals that we shouldn't eat, mm -hmm. but if you eat, it doesn't immediately kill you. But what are some of the dangers you could face from eating those? Okay, so um, scientifically, um, I would say that uh, all the animals or everything may have side effects. So scientists mm -hmm. may argue that, oh, this one has side effects, this one, all of them may have side effects. And if you subject them to nutritional analysis, mm -hmm. you may also uh, find some nutritional values for those ones. Yeah. But for me, so far as God has said, then that should be yeah. it. Uh, however, I, I will not want to mention a lot of animals, but the pig, for instance. Some may argue that it's very nutritious, but there are a lot more diseases that it harbors, mm -hmm. right? And then, uh, which may not be good, good for food. So I will not advocate that we take those that 
and not to be yeah. used for food as food, yeah. according to what the Bible yeah. says. I would like to go by that yeah. in Leviticus chapter 11, yeah, that's yes, for now, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> from our topic, meat hygiene, okay. what, what is it? Okay, so meat hygiene is basically uh, all the processes, all the things we do to the meat okay. to ensure that it is healthy for consumption. Mm. And it's, it, the quality is up to standard. Okay. And it is not going to give any disease. Already, there are issues with it. And so not following these practices would uh, endanger us the more. Mm. So it is something we have to take very, very uh, serious note of because so meat hygiene is very important. We okay. must make sure that the meat we are eating is actually um, very healthy. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what meat hygiene is. Yeah, so yeah. we'll know more about that. Yes, but as why, we go but why, why is your public health important? Okay, so um, you may think that, oh, I'm the one who got my meat mm -hmm. and I'm eating mm -hmm. it. <laughs> but if you eat that meat, and you start having diarrhea, and you start shedding salmonella, yeah. typhi, <laughs> into the environment, yeah. then it means that others are going to get it. Yeah. Yeah. But you, so it is not just about you, yeah. it's about the general public. Another example is, um, let's say you get in contact with um, a bed with flu, mm -hmm. then you, in handling that animal, uh, slaughtering process and all that you, you get a bad flu mm -hmm. yeah you may give it to other people yeah. if you're a farmer you may walk to other farms and then you give it to them mm -hmm. and then it will cause a whole mm -hmm. lot of you know economic yeah. loss and health so yeah. it is seriously a matter of public health uh importance that we have to look at it because it's not just about you even mm -hmm. though you are the only one eating mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. you may end up getting things that would spread into the environment yeah. and cause more problems yeah, yeah. yeah. even like anthrax that exactly discussed. that yeah. we discussed the other day yeah. Yeah. yeah so what processes does meat have to go through to make sure that it is healthy or it's in the right state for us to consume for us to consume yeah. so that will be a very very uh, pregnant question <laughs> and that will take us to from the time we prepare the animal whichever animal we want to use as food mm -hmm. um, from the time we prepare it from the farm to the time we slaughter it okay. and put it on the table mm -hmm. and it goes through a whole lot of processes so in animal husbandry for instance you may have the time that the animal is young you are preparing the animal at a certain age the animal will grow to the time where it is ripe for slaughter. Mm. But you don't just slaughter. We have the fattening stage where you just want the animal to put on weight a bit. And that's the profit of those who want to sell the animal. Mm. Right? But let me, let me just cut you short. How okay. do you determine if the animal is ripe for slaughter? Okay, so there are, there are age. So for instance, okay. if you are doing poultry farm, for instance, and you are doing broilers, Mm -hmm. If you are feeding them well and you are following all the standards, you know that at week eight, they must leave the farm. Oh, they okay. are already grown. Okay. So it differs from animal to animal. Oh, okay. And the weight too. So okay. there are standard weights of the animals that you will know that this animal is mm -hmm. ripe for slaughter. Mm -hmm. And there's a stage where you fatten the animals for, for slaughter. Okay. So I am... Um, even though all the stages in the animal's life is important, if you are going to use it for food, because the animal must be free from diseases, yeah. the fattening stage is quite important for me okay. because it is at a stage where you prepare the animal for it to go to the table. Yeah. And so whatever you put in that animal uh, can directly affect the person who is going to eat mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you take our drugs, the veterinary drugs, you would see an inscription on it, withdrawal periods. Okay. Yeah. So with the withdrawal periods, let's say I'm giving um, an antibiotic, let's say oxytetracycline, mm. and withdrawal period is about three weeks, right? 
what it means is that it will take three weeks for the animal to metabolize the drug okay. and excrete it or eliminate it from the system. Mm. And within that period, the animal must not be slaughtered okay. for food. Okay. Because if that animal is slaughtered for food, it will have residues mm, of, of, the of the medication okay. in there. Okay. And people are going to be exposed to low doses of this mm. medication, which can cause antibiotic resistance. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so again, it goes back to public health. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. antibiotic resistance is a big issue yeah. now. So you have a, an issue that we can easily solve with amoxicillin, but now it's not working. Mm -hmm. So it means that there's a resistance. It is not just from people who don't take their antibiotics well, mm -hmm. they don't <laughs> complete their course, or they don't take the right dose. It's also from animals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The right doses are not given to animals. Residues are in the animals, and mm -hmm. people slaughter them. They eat them. And now almost, mm -hmm. um, I think oxytetracycline is almost a useless mm -hmm. <laughs> medication yeah. now because of yeah. antibiotic resistance. So yeah. that period, sometimes the fattening period, depending on which animal it is, can be just three weeks or two weeks. Okay. They are feeding very well for the animal to just put on some weight and then slaughter. That period, you must not be putting medications. Okay. You must not be injecting the animal with a lot okay. of antibiotics. If you do, then you must wait for the withdrawal mm -hmm. period mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. So that will be on the farm. Yeah. yeah. So from the farm, assuming the slaughter house or what we will call the abattoir is not on the farm, or even you are transporting it to somebody, maybe you are selling it. In this cellar, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of people transporting animals. Yeah. So they just buy them on the roadside, they transport them to wherever they are going to slaughter, mm -hmm. and they slaughter. That is also a stage, and they all are very important. Mm -hmm. So from the farm, you prepare the animal, the transportation to the place of slaughter. Then the place of slaughter itself, how should it be like? And the processes the animal will go through before it is slaughtered. Okay. Then the slaughter itself. Okay. Then the transport of that meat to the consumer. Yeah. These are the stages. So before you get your meat on the table, it has been through these stages mm. and each stage is quite important okay so that was my next question <laughs> ah, okay why, yeah, yeah okay <laughs> why is it so important that we go through each of these stages okay. and if you miss any of these stages what are the implications yeah so if you die you miss it or you don't do it properly because it looks like you may not be able to miss them mm. because there are things you have to do maybe you don't do the fattening fine yeah. that one you may you may miss it it won't be of any problem uh, in as much as what you are giving to the animal prior to slaughter is not going to affect the meat. It will be mm -hmm. only the food. Uh -huh. But each stage is important because one, the time from the fattening stage, for instance, all the antibiotic I mentioned and other medications you give, which may be residual, uh, can cause public health issues, can yeah. cause antibiotic resistance, like I said before. Now, the transportation, someone may say, oh, it's just an animal yeah. and <laughs> we can just tie it. I think when we get to humane treatment of animals, I'll show a video on that. Uh, let me just tie the animal behind the motorbike mm -hmm. and you move see it. That's to, a lot. <laughs> yes, and move it to the place of, of slaughter or let me move it and go and sell. Mm. It has an effect on the meat. I think we'll go into details on that as well. It has a, a, an effect on the meat. It affects the quality of the meat because mm. of stress. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And then the slaughter itself, if it is not done properly, yeah. it can also be a source of infection. Okay. Right. The meat will not be quality. And at the slaughter place, there are processes that go on uh, to ensure that the meat is of good quality which is the meat inspection. Mm. So I mentioned last week about anti-motem and post-motem yeah, yeah. before the meat goes to the consumer. And these are all inspections that are done by professionals. So if you miss it, it means that 
you are missing a very important mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the meat is ready. It's been inspected by professionals. From that stage to the time it gets to your table, the meat can have a whole lot of contaminations. Mm -hmm. And uh, from those who are buying from the slaughter place to the market, there can be introduction of infection, right? And meat is not just like vegetable. Even vegetables can also be source of infection because of yeah. contamination. But meat is like uh, an agar plate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me explain to the audience who <laughs> may not know what agar yeah. plate is. <laughs> so agar plate is just um, a medium where bacteria can grow very well. <laughs> so it's like meat, because of the nutrients in it, because of the blood, yeah. And it also has some energy in there, carbohydrates and all. Mm. All these things are, create a very conducive environment yeah. for bacteria growth. Okay. And so any introduction of bacteria, uh, infectious bacteria, from the time the meat is ready or is passed by the certified person that it can be used for consumption, even from that period to the time it gets to your table, it can have contaminants, mm. which can also cause serious diseases. Yeah. So care must be taken when handling it even from there. And even in your own home, when you are handling the meat, you must also keep good hygienic conditions, yeah. else you can contaminate the yeah. meat. Yeah. 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 So I'll come to the transportation now. Sure. Um, how, how should animals be transported to make sure that the to meat sure. is good okay. for consumption? Okay. Okay, so the major thing is about stress. Mm. So the animal must not be stressed. <laughs> well, in the olden days, I heard, well, I think it was my grandmother, uh, whenever somebody wants to slaughter a, a, a bird or a domestic bird, mm. like say chicken, he will say that oh, they have to give some water and they have to give some food. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so they do this, but they, they, they really don't know what they were doing. Yeah. And so you see this animal, they chase the animal around and they try to catch it. Mm. You see all the children mm. chasing the animal. <laughs> and after that, they want the animal to relax. Yeah. Because they want it. They, they, they don't know the science behind it, but it, if an animal is stressed, a whole lot of chemical processes go on in the body which can end up, uh, uh, it reduces the quality of meat that the animal will produce. Okay. The transport must be stress-free. The space must be big enough for the animal to be able to stand. Mm. There must even be food and water <laughs> for the animal. So you cannot just tie the animal <laughs> somewhere yeah. and then move the animal. There will be so much stress animal will be in danger because they feel endangered mm -hmm. at that stage. Yeah. So you make sure, depending on the distance, sometimes you even sedate for okay. some animals. Okay. Yes. So make sure that the animal doesn't go through stress because the animal going through stress will affect the, the meat mm. they eat. And I think talking of stress, we can even look at it into details. I don't know if you want us to go yes, there we now. Can do that now. Okay, yeah. so we can show uh, the quality of meat based on the stress level of the animal. Okay. So you realize that um, if animals are stressed, it can affect the meat in various ways. There's oxidative stress, which actually releases a lot of uh, acids into the meat. So the pH will be low, okay. creating a very conducive environment for bacteria growth, mm. right? So when that meat is slaughtered, when that animal is slaughtered, even the onset of, there's something we call rigor mortis. Okay. So when the animal dies, it's well bled and everything, rigor mortis must set in, a whole lot of processes must take place before that carcass is properly uh, changed into meat. Mm. 
to give you that tender taste you get from the meat. Okay. If the animal is stressed, these processes don't go on well mm -hmm. because of the chemicals that are released okay. into the meat. And also, uh, the meat becomes very prone to bacterial infections. Okay. Yeah, because of the acid levels. Look at how I saw a video and I posted it on my page some time back. I don't know if it is showing for the audience to see. But you can check this. You see how somebody has tied goats yeah. <laughs> on a motorbike. Look at the number of goats there. Yeah. Right? And I believe this was Salah or something, yeah. or, or maybe for a festival or something. I think this was taken somewhere in the Christmas season. Okay. Uh, when we were saying that uh, Christ has died for <laughs> us, and so <laughs> we are going to make merry, mm. but we don't really care about these animals yeah. and, and, and what happens to them. You understand? So you think that, oh, you are just transporting this animal. It is about the animal and the animal alone, but no, it's about you. Mm. It's about the one going to consume the meat yeah. because it doesn't give the quality that you need from that meat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So in the process of slaughtering, we talk about the abattoir, abattoir. What, mm -hmm. what exactly is an abattoir? Okay. Um, so the abattoir is a place where we slaughter animals. Mm. Yeah. And it has different compartments. Okay. And so you get to the premise, and there's a place called the lie reach, okay. where the animals that are brought are kept for resting and the anti mortem. Mm. So these animals are brought, it's not like they, you just bring the animal, and straight ahead, the animal goes to the slaughter. Okay they have to rest. Mm -hmm. So that tells you how important it is for you to keep the animal at a very low stress level mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you slaughter the animal. Actually, even fighting must be prevented <laughs> in the lie reach mm -hmm. <laughs> between the animals. Okay. Yeah, before you, you now transport the animals for slaughter. So there are personnel in the abattoir. There are workers in the abattoir. There are two main people who are in charge of the abattoir. Okay. So the veterinary officer and the public health officers, mm -hmm. or the uh, sanitation officers, environmental health officers. These people are trained people who can uh, make sure that the meat that comes out from the abattoir is healthy. Now, after the lie reach, then now the animal, if the animal is checked, at anti mortem and it's good for slaughter, then the animal will now move into a chamber okay. for the slaughter pro properly to be done. And then the meat is checked, and that is the post mortem. Mm -hmm. So, the meat inspector, who can be a veterinary officer okay. or, like I said, environmental health officer will check vital organs, mm. will check certain things. This will be for, for the professionals, yeah. but they check yeah. a whole lot of things. One of it is the lymph nodes. Okay. You know, the lymph node is a place where when there's an infection, yeah, it drains, yeah. it, drains yeah. it and all that, and it gets inflamed. Yeah. So they check all these things and make sure that the meat is not having any disease, right? It's good for consumption before they pass it. Mm. Right. So basically, that's what goes on in the abattoir. Okay. Uh, there's the Accra abattoir, and they have some modern, you know, facilities there for these processes. Mm. I think we'll go into it when it comes to the methods we use in slaughtering animals. Okay. Yeah. okay. But you mentioned antimortem. What happens if an mm. animal doesn't pass that stage? Yeah. So if the animal doesn't pass that stage, <laughs> you can't slaughter. Mm. And the animal is taken back for treatment. Okay. Or if the disease is something that uh, is contagious, like anthrax, the animal can be euthanized. Oh, okay. Or slaughtered, but not for consumption. Mm -hmm. And be disposed of, yeah. right? So at anti-mortem, there are a number of things they check. Discharge, 
from the nose, from the eyes, uh, from the inner region. Okay. Let's say there's a greenish discharge from the inner region. It could be botulism, mm. which is poisoning, right? Like Clostridium botulinum yeah. poisoning and all that. So if these things are seen, then the animal will not pass mm. for slaughter. Yeah. You see that the animal is taken back for treatment or if the veterinarian or the environmental health officer realize that it's something that will be of public health uh, importance, yeah. then the animal will be, you know, disposed of. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Are there any laws governing the slaughtering of animals in the abattoir? Yes, and in Ghana in general. Okay. So okay. there are bylaws. For instance, there's a law, a bylaw by the Kasana Nankana okay. Municipal okay. Assembly, okay. right? Where they outlined exactly how things should go on in the abattoir, mm. how animals should be slaughtered. So that if there's a slaughter slab somewhere, where they are just slaughtering people, animals. There are people, when they want to slaughter a big animal, they just call somebody mm -hmm. who, <laughs> is, who slaughters animals. Mm -hmm. And then you come and slaughter for them yeah. and cut, cut for them to go and eat. There are laws governing that. You mm -hmm. cannot do that. I see. It must be a place authorized by the municipal assembly uh, with professionals to do that. And they have been given that legislative power to be able to dismiss your animal if it doesn't pass, right? Okay. Or if you don't uh, behave the way they want you to behave in the abattoir, yeah. you can be taken out. Okay. Yeah. So there are proper bylaws governing the slaughter of animals in Ghana. So you yeah. could actually get into trouble for just slaughtering an animal yeah, in your house? Uh, that we will come to that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, you see, in every situation, we have the ideal situation where you have to take your animal to the abattoir. But the, but the thing is, how many abattoirs do we mm -hmm. have in Ghana? Yeah. And uh, what if where you are, there are no abattoirs, mm. right? And uh, you are not getting in touch with any veterinary officer. Doesn't mean you can't slaughter your domestic yeah. fowl. <laughs> yeah, you can't slaughter your domestic fowl or your goat in the house. Um, ideally, you should get the environmental health officer or the veterinary officer to check for you and all that. But let me say the most ideal is to go to the abattoir. Mm. In the absence of all this, you must make sure that you are not eating a diseased animal, right? Yeah. So you can also see for yourself if the animal is sick. Yeah. You can see by looking at a discharge, by looking at if there's diarrhea or the animal is dull or things like that. You can see all these things and these are things you should look out for. So that's not the ideal, but if you don't have all the facilities, mm -hmm. then you must make sure you are eating a healthy, healthy animal. animal. Yeah. 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 So usually we would see that their throat is slashed and then yes. that's how we slaughter them. Yeah, Are normally. there other, other, other ways in which they can be killed? Yes, yeah, so all the slaughters, we, types of slaughter we have include the slashing of the throat mm. of the animal. Let me say with the, uh, uh, the food animals I know of. Right. And there's a reason for that. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Um, it, it's a process called bleeding. Okay. Yeah. And the re there's a reason why the animal must be well bled. Because blood is a conveyor of all the nutrients and also infections, mm -hmm. right? And also, so if there's a lot of blood in the meat, then you increase the source of infection mm -hmm. for that meat, right? And so, for a quality meat, it must be well bled. Okay. And the major vessel that can bleed the animal very well is a jugular vein, mm. right? And all the other veins there. 
So that is why they mainly slash okay, those the throat okay. to make sure that all the blood comes out from the animal. Mm. Uh -huh. And again, if you, you go to the Bible again, it says that you should not eat the animal with the blood in it, yeah. right? And so that's why they do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. But what are some inhumane practices you've seen in, in like trying to slaughter the animal? Yeah. That kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a very interesting issue. Um, normally, when the animals are not food animals, like I said earlier, the preparing of that animal for meat is difficult. Mm. For instance, a cat, right? And I have not seen, but I've heard weird processes they <laughs> used to <laughs> to, yeah. to kill to kill cats. Yeah. If they put a cat in a sack yeah. and hit it to <laughs> a wall or a wood or whatever, mm -hmm. hit the cat until the cat die. Mm. That's sad. Yeah. And <laughs> you see, so you, you don't even know where you are hitting. So you kill this animal cruelly. So all the stresses are at play. Yeah. You increase, you, you lower the pH in the animal. You cause a whole lot of problems. Mm -hmm. The meat itself is not even wholesome for consumption. Mm -hmm. It's not even bled. It's not bled. Yeah. So the <laughs> blood is inside, and the animal is already dead, mm -hmm. and you are now trying to bleed it. It mm -hmm. will not bleed properly. Mm -hmm. There's already internal bleeding, yeah. <laughs> you see? Yeah. And that's very cruel. Uh, look at a dog, for instance. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they hit the head with something, and it's a whole lot. So this will fall under animal cruelty. Mm -hmm. And in our laws, we have it. Okay. You can't be cruel to animals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can't be cruel to animals. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to the proper slaughter of animals, there are processes and mm -hmm. there are types that we have to look at. Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. Um, so on the market, you mentioned that even after the an animals or the meat has been bought from the slaughterhouse mm -hmm. to the market, there's a lot of contamination that could go on. Yeah. How do they ensure, how do you ensure as officers that well, the meat at the market is wholesome for consumption? Great. So this again is the work of the sanitary officers mm. to look at. I understand that people who sell consumables are to have certificate. They are to have health certificates. Okay. And ideally, they should be trained periodically. Mm. Yeah. So that uh, somebody is selling meat. They are not even wearing an apron. Yeah. They are supposed to wear gloves. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are supposed to wear gloves. And when they visit, uh, you know, the loo or something and they come, they must wash properly, mm. but they don't. So they feel like, oh, this is going to be cooked. Mm -hmm. And so they handle it anyhow. Yeah. Uh, Mayanka or whatever, I, I've heard of a place where they slaughter animals. And, they, and if you get to Mayanka, you look at the environment, and you look at the way the meat is handled, and the people handling the meat, the clothes they are wearing, mm -hmm. and you realize that this is very, very contaminated. So it is a work of the municipal assembly, and I think they are helping with that. If you, if you look at the Accra Batwa, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. Hygienic conditions, yeah. And I think uh, we, the citizens, must also play our own parts by patronizing the quality, yeah. rather than just uh, trying to get some cheap meat somewhere <laughs> where they are not doing things properly. Mm -hmm. So I think laws must be enforced. People must do things properly, yeah. even on the market. They must wear protective clothing. They must handle the meat very well. They must ensure that the place is free of flies. Mm. You see the number of flies yeah. settling on a meat that is going to, to the house, and you realize that this is going with a lot of things, mm. right? Yeah. So I think all these things must be checked if we, if we want to uh, get quality meat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is getting very interesting. <laughs> but we'll go for a quick commercial break, and when we get back, we'll continue. Please stay tuned.
Angel of Hope. So do seek a baby bottle channel. No one should have seen it. Yet to me, the mere summer a cook or main she has saw the nature of Yana, or the Roma, far main, the four seeker first to be, not also for bra, and you can crack a star nine two eight star three four star one zero four hash. And I say zero two four nine one nine three zero. Eight three. Hope channel. Yes, it's a bravo. Hope channel. Yeah, Jia Kranom. The Valley View University Governance Council, Vice Chancellor, Management, Faculty, Staff, and Students invite you to their 29th congregation ceremony under the theme Excellence, Integrity, and Service in an era of global instability and permissiveness. Activities scheduled include special award ceremony on Friday, the 7th of July at 12 noon, consecration and baccalaureate service on Saturday, July 8th at 10 a.m. Climax in the program will be the congregation ceremony on Sunday, 9th July at 10 a.m. All activities are scheduled to take place at the university's chapel. Gracing the occasion will be several dignitaries, including His Excellency the President of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa Ekufu Ado, His Excellency the President of Zambia, Hakainde Hechelema, Honorable Chief of Staff, Akusia Frema Oseopare, and His Excellency the Former President of Ghana, John Ajekum Kufuo. The event promises to be a grand celebration of achievement, culture, and diversity. Valley View University, excellence, integrity, and service. Welcome back from the commercial break. We've been talking about meat hygiene, how to ensure that our meat we are eating is safe from the farm to our plates. And Dr. Hia is here with us. So, Dr. Hia, why, why is it so important that um, the way that animals are slaughtered um, is important to us? Why is it so important? Yeah, okay. So, like I explained earlier, um, humane slaughter of animals is very important because mm. it's ensure a good quality meat. Yeah. Uh, on that note, we have different ways of slaughtering the animals. Okay. And the uh, humane slaughter is making sure that the animal doesn't feel pain okay. during the slaughter, during the slashing of the throat and all that. And so based on that, we have the modern slaughter methods. Okay which begins with a process we call stunning. So stunning is rendering the animal unconscious before slaughter. Okay. It can be done by a concussion gun, mm. which is shot at the forehead, right? And uh, renders the brain inactive. But isn't that a stressor? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it, help, it helps them. Okay. You know, just forcing the animal to death by mm. killing it like that. Yeah. And then we also have the standing by electric shock, mm. where there's a particular voltage for each animal. Okay. So the different animals, the different, uh, you know, farm animals have different voltage that the experts know mm. when they use it. Then we also have the standing by carbon dioxide gas. Okay. So all these things is you ensure that the animal is free of pain and stress. So you are killing these animals for your food. Mm -hmm. You must make sure that uh, they don't go through pain and stress. However, we have other types of uh, slaughter, which we call the religious slaughter. Okay. And that would be the Jewish way of slaughter, called the kosher, okay. or the, um, the Muslims called the halal. Mm. 
So if they don't slaughter it that way, they don't see it as whole for consumption. Mm. But all these things comes with slashing the throat. Okay. Right. So after stunning the animal, and it happens in all animals, even birds, after stunning the animal, the throat is slashed and the blood comes out. Mm. They make sure that the blood drains out as much as possible. Okay. With the religious slaughter, there are specified people who do that and they have a very sharp knife. Even the kosher, they make sure that the slash is just once. Mm. Mm. Unlike when you want to slaughter our own fowl, we <laughs> get some blunt knife and we are just doing <laughs> it <laughs> over and over. And this animal is in serious pain yeah. and crying, <laughs> but we don't care <laughs> because we just want to eat our meat. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think it is right. They make sure that they slash it just once. Even with the halal, they make sure they slash it once and slashing every structure apart from the cervical vertebra mm. there. So that they make sure that all the structures here are gone and so there will be no blood flow to the yeah. brain. And so as the animal bleeds, uh, it, it dies. And normally, there are some countries that legislate for the standing before slaughter. Mm. In, 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 the, in the quest to make sure animals are protected. And so in animal welfare, they make sure that they do the standing. However, they allow for the religious people to, to slaughter with their own method. Mm. And I think that one too is really fast. And so it also helps. It helps. So I think those who would also do their slaughter in their house can also take notes from some yeah. of these things rather than stressing the animal too much. A lot of, if it's a goat or a sheep, a lot of people catching the animal, putting him down, slashing the throat <laughs> with some blunt knife. Mm. It's not good. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good for the animal, and it's not good for the one who is going to consume the animal. Yeah. So all these things go through very good, strict processes to make sure that the meat that is coming out, it's wholesome for consumption. Mm. Because it can really, really be a threat if these processes are not done properly. Yeah. 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 With a stand and do we have processes like that in like our abattoirs? Oh yes. Oh we do. Yeah, we do. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So you go to Accra abattoir, Kumasi abattoir, and a whole lot of the abattoirs in Ghana, they are standing, uh, you know, guns, they have the, like I said earlier, they are more than a quick one. I mm. think they are doing very well, okay. trying to make sure that the meat we eat here uh, is, is good for consumption. Mm. With, the, with the cold store, the, the ones they bring, you know they bring poultry from outside yeah. and, and then we eat them. We can't talk much about it because we don't know how they are slaughtered. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. we don't know how they are slaughtered and how long they've been kept for. But we just go to the coastal and we buy okay. some chicken back and, and eat it. Yeah. It's something we also have to, have to check. We have to check those things when we are buying. I think they may have expiry dates. We have to check it properly. And I think we have to check whether it is not already in a bad shape before yeah. we take it. Yes. Okay, yeah. So you've mentioned a little bit. About how, at what point can we determine if meat is spoiled. How, how will we know? Okay, so that will take us to meat spoilage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so meat spoilage is basically when the meat uh, has gone bad, let me put it that way, and it's not good for consumption. Now people think that, oh, if I keep my meat in the deep freezer for a long time, then it's okay, mm -hmm. it's not going to spoil. Meat can also spoil even under uh, anaerobic conditions. I see. Yeah, yeah when it's kept for a very, very long, mm. long time. Because there are some bacteria that can grow under anaerobic conditions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And also those that can grow under aerobic conditions. So anytime you realize that the meat is having a foul smell, that one is an indicator. Mm. That one, anybody can see that this meat is, yeah. is bad. It's bad. But there are others that you may not see when it has not gotten to the stage of putrefaction, 
when it has not gotten to the stage where the meat is already part mm -hmm. and you are having a very pungent smell and mm -hmm. you know that you have to throw it away it can become slimy mm. so the meat is basically more slimy than than how it's supposed to be then that's a problem okay yeah then you have to look at it um, under the anaerobic conditions some of the meat can have some like cilia I don't know how to explain but like small small hair okay, okay. yeah that grows on on the meat mm. so you have to observe it okay. you see like cilia growing on the all patches of colors mm. like this patch green and some yellow getting to pinkish mm. patches on the meat then you have to know that this meat is going bad mm. like i said earlier the meat is like an agar plate like a plate where bacteria can grow so immediately you start seeing these things you know that now yeah not supposed to consume mm. that meat so the smell when it's pungent is going bad when the consistency is not the same anymore it's more slimy then you have to look at it when the color is changing right and you realize that a lot of fluid is coming from the meat mm. and i don't know we have a culture where people like to eat rotten meat really? or fish i see oh you you don't know about <laughs> no, that no i've not heard of that before you don't know about uh momoni oh <laughs> yeah momoni is rotten for sure <laughs> okay momoni is rotten okay. and people want to eat it but something okay. that is rotten <laughs> <laughs> oh my. people want to eat something that is rotten people yeah. want to eat momoni and there's another one. I don't know why people would want to eat more money <laughs> or <laughs> things that are rotten and, mm. and smelling. Well, yeah. really it's a delicacy, yeah. <laughs> but I think you have to take care. Uh, these things may just be meat spoilage. Mm. But it's a delicacy for us and we, want <laughs> to, we like the scent of mm. it. We want to eat it. <laughs> we have to be very, very careful yeah. because meat spoilage can lead to causation of a lot of diseases. I mentioned about salmonella. Mm. Yeah, salmonella can. It's a very common GIT disease. Yeah. And then the coliforms, colibacillosis, it can also lead that. And then rotten meat can have botulism. So the Clostridium uh, botulinum, the bacteria itself is there, but the growth of that bacteria produces toxins. And you know, even though some of the bacteria that causes infection, you can easily boil them and then at a certain temperature you get rid of them. Okay. You cannot get rid of toxins mm. by boiling. Okay. So if there is a food spoilage, basically meat, and it's already getting to the putrefaction stage and there is clostridium in there, you may boil, the clostridium may die, but the toxin will still be there. Mm. And you can get botulism after eating that meat. Okay. So you can easily be poisoned yeah. by eating meat that mm. is spoiled. But why does meat get spoiled so fast? Yeah, so like I mentioned, I think I've said it again, it's like an egg plate. Okay because it contains a whole lot of nutrients mm. conducive for bacteria growth okay. very conducive for bacteria growth it has the blood in there it has some sugar in there mm. yes and uh, so all the things there are conducive for bacteria growth so the moment you leave it for a time it starts going bad okay. it starts going bad and the blood in it you realize that in some cultures, uh, they hang the meat on uh, smoke mm. or something, or uh, if not even smoke, heat, and they make sure they slash all the small blood vessels. Okay. So after slashing the throat, they splay it, the meat, and they hang it, and the fat and the blood drains mm. for a very long time. And you realize that that meat actually stays longer. Oh, okay. Because okay. they kind of take 
most of the things that are conducive for bacterial growth mm, out, out of it. So it is part of the preservation of meat. Mm. Drying is even part of it, right? So there are some fish that are dry and you realize that they are always there. Mm. Yeah. So the, the meat itself uh, would have some nutrients in it that helps bacterial growth. And so leaving it there goes bad very quickly. Yeah. Very, very yeah. quickly. Yeah. 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 So we're out of time, but I think this will be our last question. Okay. When you go to the market sometimes and you're getting beef, <laughs> you see that it looks very red. I'm guessing it's coloring. Yes. Right? How, how dangerous is that for us? <laughs> so, uh, again, we are in a culture where people like their um, uh, food to look colorful. Mm. But I would advise that we get our colors from natural sources. Okay. Yeah. So the pigments we get from our vegetables are very healthy for us. Okay. So the tomato, our garden eggs, all our vegetables have different, 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 different colors. And these are the colors that are good for us. If we start going in to take artificial colors, that's a problem. Uh. Because you don't even know what color it yeah. is and the source of it. Mm -hmm. As I sit here, I don't know which color they use. <laughs> 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 I don't know which color they use for yeah. that. And I understand even palm oil, people add some colors to make it yeah, very red, yeah. like Sudan red and <laughs> all that, which is very, very poisonous. So I think we must be careful. Meat uh, is good for those who want to eat it. <laughs> But uh, we have to be careful when we are consuming it. We must know the source of the meat we are buying. It must be from a certified abattoir. If we are killing the meat ourselves in the house, we must make sure it's not a sick animal. Yeah. We must not keep uh, animals and sell the healthy ones and eat the sick ones. Mm, mm -hmm, we, are not, mm -hmm, we are doing ourselves mm -hmm, a disservice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we give the healthy ones out and we, we eat the sick ones. We don't eat them when one is sick, we said, let's slaughter. Yeah. That is not right. Okay. That is not right. So what I want us to take from here, you must know the source of your meat. You must check for meat spoilage before boiling it, your meat. And you must make sure you buy it from a good source, a good source. If you are slaughtering it yourself because of the inadequate staff or you don't have an abattoir near you or you may not have the money to call a vet to come and check, whatever you do, you must not slaughter a sick animal and eat because you don't know what is going on with that animal. Yeah. You may get a whole lot of diseases mm -hmm. from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so much. I've learned a lot, and I'm sure we'll have you again another time. Thank you so much for coming. This has been an interesting discussion. I believe you've learned a lot at home, too. Whatever you do, do not eat a sick animal, and let's try not to stress animals before we kill them as well. Thank you so much for joining us today on The Consulting Room. We hope to see you again, and have a good night.